Hello and welcome to the Gina Lofton Show, a show that contains proven processes, not theories, anyone can follow, no matter age, income, sex, or whatever else, unlocking your mind for financial freedom and success. Here is your host, Gina Lofton. Hello, everyone. It's Gina Lofton. I have Anita Lofton. Yes, she is does have the same last name as myself. She's my sister-in-law, was married to my brother. I thought that I can bring on an expert in the field of health insurance, especially because open enrollment is coming up in the not so distant future. And there's no one better that I know that knows about health insurance than Anita Lofton. So welcome Anita to the show. And thank you so much for agreeing to um, come on and share with my audience everything about the um, health insurance and what we should look out for for um, open enrollment. Oh, thank you, Gina. Thank you for inviting me. I appreciate it. Um, just to give you a little background on um, myself. I've been in healthcare for over 30 years and I know I'm dating myself. The first 25 years was spent in national account healthcare, healthcare sales to major corporations and the, the past five years has been basically um, advocacy and um, working with seniors to help them maximize their benefits. So I love what I do, and I'm very much entrenched in healthcare, and I've seen a lot of change. So thank you for having me on the show, and thank you for saying such great things. Not a problem. So, Anita, let's first start off with um, Obamacare, because, you know, there's been radical changes. There was an introduction of Obamacare a few years ago, and now that repeal or replace, I'm not sure exactly what has transpired, but if you could share with everyone who may not know what happened, if anything happened with Obamacare. Yeah, thank, well, nothing really happened. Everything is basically the same. Um, with Obamacare, Obama was actually offering health care or mandated, should I say, that everyone in the country have health care. And if they didn't have health care, there was a tax penalty for non-compliance. So that, that is one thing that is changing though. January, 2019, Trump changed the tax penalty. And he, so as of January, 2019, the tax penalty is removed. One of the other things that um, Obamacare had done with the benefit plans is he removed preexisting limitations. Um, he, what he did is he made the benefits basically the same so that people can have a, a, a greater benefit of care. But with the Trump care, repeal and reform, like I said, they removed the penalty, but they also um, introduced some other health plans um, where they re removed some of the benefit mandates, meaning with under the Obamacare, pre-existing limitations were removed. And a pre-existing limitation prior to Obamacare was if you had a illness, or a diagnosis and you are affected with a new health plan, that particular illness diagnosis, if you had um, any care, or you're taking medication, you've seen the doctor within the last three months, it's it would be considered pre-existing, and the insurance company would either cover nothing or they will cover a limited amount until you've been on the plan for 12, 12 consecutive months, okay? So Obamacare removed the pre-existing, so it allowed everybody to have care whether they were sick or not. They had the same type of care when they were effective on the plan. The Trump Care, what they've done is they created these new plans. It's called the Trump Care, and they removed some of the Obama benefit mandates, meaning that the pre-existing condition, they have um, health plans that include pre-existing pre -existing limitations. Sorry. Uh, okay. All right. So the the Trump Care that was introduced, um, you know, I guess this year, actually allows people to get health insurance, and they will exclude the need to have a pre-existing condition covered. Is that true? no? The Trump, the Obamacare excluded the pre-existing limitation. Okay. The Trump Care now 
it can include the pre-existing limitation. And why is that? Because as you know, once we the Obamacare was introduced, the premiums went up skyrocket to the roof, right? Yep. And that's because of the benefit mandates. You had to cover, I mean, pre-existing was, was limited and um, it was removed and everything was covered. And, you know, so there's different mandates when it came to prescription. They all have to meet the same type of mandates. With Trump Care, Trump Care said, um, well, you know what, we're going to scale down these benefit plans. So you can include pre-existing limitation. So if you have someone that um, you want to cover, then you can impose the pre-existing limitation. And by doing that, of course, the um, health care, the health plan is not taking a, a lot of risks, especially for that, that existing illness that you have. Make sense? Yep, I got it. Yeah. Okay. So just for the audience um, who is listening to this show today, you're probably thinking, why are we talking about health insurance um, and health care on a, and let's just say most of my topics are more towards investing and, you know, financial freedom and having your passive income exceed your expenses. Well, let me answer that really, really quickly. If your medical and your health benefits are insufficient to cover the cost of your care, it is one of the major drivers of you going into bankruptcy. So I thought that we should talk about healthcare because it is a big um, expenditure and there are many changes. So that's why we're actually having this episode today. So I wanted to kind of put that out, put that out there so everyone knows that this is a very important show, even though you may not think it is about your, um, you know, financing of your, abundant life. Um, it is exactly what that is. Um, anyway. Yeah, and not only that, Gina, but into that, it's not, healthcare is, is, is really something that we really need to wrap our, 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 our minds around because, you know, once you get sick, it, it, finances is one thing, you know, you think you can pay for the best of care, but you got to understand exactly what you're dealing with, right? Yeah. So I think that's another reason why it's important that um, we talk about health care and it goes hand in hand with with finances too because you know i think i, I mentioned before and i talked uh, when i when i'm speaking to people about health care one of the things that went over our heads um yeah. over the past 20 years was the um, long-term care mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. we never paid attention to it and i'm a baby boomer now and i you know i was selling health insurance but i still didn't think i felt like i was invincible Nothing was going to happen to me as long as I health care. I'm not going to need long-term care. But with the um, senior market being saturated, with the baby boomers, there's a lot of people who didn't pay attention to long-term care. And now that we're older, we can't even get it. And, and long-term care basically is custodial care, you know? So, I mean, custodial care is so you, you, you're sick you have a chronic illness, you're at home, and you need someone to come in and take care of you, cook for you, clean for you, help administer your med your medication, which is something that the normal health plan doesn't cover. I so see. I think that's one of the reasons why we should actually be having this conversation. No, um, definitely, I, I, I would agree. So Anita, why don't you kind of tell me, when is the open enrollment, what is the open enrollment period? Um, we're in mid-September now, but when does open enrollment start and end in general? Um, open enrollment is a window during which individuals and employees may add or drop their health insurance or make changes, not just employers, but um, Medi Medicare open enrollment. It starts in October. The Obamacare starts in October. Um, and a lot of the large major corporations, they also have their open enrollment. And during that time, you have the option to um, change different uh, health plans, like go from Kaiser to Blue Cross or HealthNet or United Healthcare. And that's with all of the, the, um, the, 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 the organizations. Medicare normally offers several different health plans that you can choose from. Um, Obamacare offers several different health plans that you can choose from. And so does some of the major employers that have their open enrollment during that time. And during that time, it's really important that we pay attention to our benefits, 
um, meaning the deductibles. And the deductibles is the amount you pay prior to um, when you, the deductible is the amount you pay when you see a doctor prior to the health plan paying for you. So for example, um, let's say you have a thousand dollar bill and um, you have a $500 deductible. That first $500 you're responsible for. And then the other, the next $500, you will pay 20% and the insurance company pays 80%. Normally that's called an 80-20 coinsurance. Yep. So usually the health plan pays the, the, the larger amount, right? Yep. The other thing that you need to look for, out for is your out-of-pocket because, um, and your out-of-pocket is, is expenses, how much you have to pay out of your pocket before the health plan will start paying at 100%. And that those deductibles, those, the coinsurances, and the out-of-pockets starts over every year, every calendar of the year, January 1. So you should be aware of that. And since we've implemented Obamacare, the deductibles and um, the out-of-pockets are getting higher and higher. I mean, you, I, I, I've seen some plans that have $10,000 deductibles. And you're saving money, but you have a $10,000 deductible, and your out-of-pocket may be you know, another um, 15000 So that's $25,000 that you have to pay out of your pocket before the insurance company starts to pay. So that's something to pay attention to. The difference between a deductible and out of pocket, are those two different things? Yes, yes. The deductible is the amount that you pay prior to the insurance company, your health care plan, paying anything. So that's that first dollar amount. That's what the deductible is. Okay. The, the out of pockets is basically um, the amount that you spend, the total amount that you will spend before the insurance company continu- continues to pay your um, your bills at 100%. For example, we all know that hospital expenses are very high, right? Yep. Let's say you go to um, have a major surgery, and that major surgery is, um, let's say, a, a, $50,000, and that's low, right? That's low, just a comparison. You pay your deductible, and um, let's say your out-of-pocket is, uh, I think I said $50,000, I'm sorry. So after, let's say, but let's say that surgery is $100,000. Yeah. The maximum you would have to pay out of your pocket is $50,000. And then the insurance company will pay the next 50000 I see. Am I making any sense to you? It's kind of confusing. We can. Yeah, yeah. So that that the out of pocket then the maximum out of pocket would be fifty thousand dollars, and that's yes. mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. The maximum out of pocket is fifty thousand dollars. So if your bill is a hundred thousand, your maximum out of pocket is fifty thousand. Then yeah. Then yeah, you would be exposed to paying that fifty thousand dollars. Yes. Mm-hmm. And so, how best can the listeners actually learn about what is included or excluded their deductibles how can they go about making the best decision on which plan to actually select for open enrollment when open enrollment happens i should say yeah and and um just to let you know that first let's go back i know you asked me that question because open enrollment starts for medicare um every year, October the 15th through December the 7th. That's every single year, okay? Okay. And that's for January 2019 effective date this year. The Obamacare open enrollment starts November the 1st through December the 15th. And in some states, they extend the open enrollment on Obamacare, Um, but that's for 2019 effective date. What you need to know, and I'm glad you asked that question, how can you best make the, uh, choose the plan that's best for you, is that when you make your changes during open enrollment, you usually have to adhere to it for the rest of that year until next open, until next open enrollment. Okay, so you, unless you have a qualifying event. So the best way to make that um, uh, an informed decision is understand, first of all, your deductibles, like I said, your um, coinsurances and your out-of-pocket, and everybody is different. You know, there's some people that need ongoing care. There's some people that doesn't get sick at all. Um, but just understand the benefits that you have. Ask questions and the fundamentals and, and make sure that you understand the fundamentals. One of the things that I've noticed 
since we have installed the Bob, uh, Obamacare, that there's a lot of health plans that are, um, they, they may have to um, make sure that they include the essentials, but they're, so they're cutting back on other things like DMEs. And DME is a durable medical equipment. And that's something that you use like a, a crutches or a CPAP machine. Um, um, so, so, so what I've noticed, a CPAP machine is a, a machine that you use to sleep with people that, for people that have sleep apnea. Yeah. And what I've noticed with the plan is I get a lot of phone calls saying the, 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 the CPAP machine is not covered. Well, I was surprised at first, you know, because, you know, when you when you have sleep apnea, it really affects how you breathe and, you know, a lot of different things. And I'm surprised that that wouldn't be medically necessary. Yeah. So, you know, for some people to thrive every day, they need it. But it's one of the things that are not covered. They have pay out of their pocket. And the machine is um, about eight hundred dollars. Yeah. But that could be a lot of money for some people, especially if you haven't budgeted for it, right? So um, I, I think that you need to make sure that you just ask questions. And during open enrollment, there's always some someone available to you. There's a broker like, my, like myself. There's also, um, when you go to the open enrollment meetings, whether you they're coming to you and you're an employer and they're in this room and they're talking about benefits, Make sure you 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 get a, a number to call because member service is always available for you, and don't be afraid to ask questions. I see. Yeah. So I noticed for those of you, I have um, Blue Shield, I believe. Blue Shield, Blue Cross. Are those the same company? Yeah, they're the same companies. They're just called different things in different parts of um, the country. Got it. So I know I, there's a, a few webinars that I will be participating in to learn about my specific coverage about what's included or excluded, um, what the deductibles and out of pocket and the co-payments are. So are those things that the listeners can do in your you know recommendation? I don't know if all. Yeah, yeah, and another thing I, I think so too. And then if you if you really want to get down to the meat and potatoes of everything, ask for a copy of the F explanation of benefits or the ex evidence of coverage. And that's something that really breaks down the actual benefits: what's covered, what's not, what what's excluded, skilled nursing facilities, all of that stuff. So that's what I would ask for, ask for before I um, make a, a decision. And that way, you re, you are really making an informed decision. I see. So I've heard something about supplemental benefits. Can you talk to us about what those are and what are they good to have supplemental benefits? Yeah, um, supplemental benefits. Um, it's actually called supplemental health insurance. Uh -huh. And it can cover some of your, remember, remember we talked about the out-of-pocket expenses? Yep. Um, it can help you cover your deductibles. It can help you pay some of your coinsurances. Um, it and can is it pretty affordable or is, it, is that more of a subjective question? No, no, no. It can, it's, it can help you. I'm sorry, did you say, is it affordable? Yes, is it affordable? Is it? Like, yeah, yes, yes, yes. It's affordable. And it's more affordable the younger, like anything with insurance, the younger you, you are, the more affordable it is. But it's still affordable. Even, even as you um, get older, it's still affordable because a lot of people don't, don't use it, um, but it's there for them. And, you know, they have hospital plans. Um, let's, let's say you're in, admitted in the hospital unexpectedly. You go in the hospital, they may pay, you know, they can pay up to two to $5,000 a day, you being in the hospital. And the, the good thing about it is it doesn't pay your insurance company. It pays you. Nice. So if you're self-employed or, you know, you're, you need extra money, even if you have a great insurance policy that's 100%, the supplemental benefit plan still pays for you. So you know, it helps pay some of your expenses at home if you need to hire someone to come in and take care of you. So this is a great plan. And the supplemental um, health insurance plans are plans like HealthNet, I'm sorry, um, Aflac and um, Colonial. And I think um, AAA even have one, Allstate. There's a lot of 
different vol voluntary benefits, they're called voluntary benefits, but there's a lot of um, different insurance companies that are selling the supplemental health insurance plans, especially now with Obamacare and the high deductibles and out-of-pocket costs. Interesting. And supplemental insurance, can you get that any time of the year or is that only or during the open enrollment period as well? That's a very good question, Gina. You can get that any time of the year. Okay. All right. Any time of the year. Yes. Thank you so much. So Anita, I am really interested in knowing what is the one key takeaway that the audience can like take from this interview that will benefit them for life? Um, the one thing that I've stressed more and more um, throughout the whole interview is to understand your benefits. Because since Obamacare, the um, healthcare industry has a deluge of people um, actually seeking healthcare. People that never would seek healthcare before are, are seeking healthcare. So that means that the, the providers, in my opinion, don't have enough time to spend with you. So you need to learn how to become your own advocate. And the only way to do that is to educate yourself, right? In the beginning, just educate yourself, understand, especially if you have a family, you have children, you know, you wanna make sure that you educate yourself at least with the fundamentals. So you can ask the, um, the pertinent questions that, that, that can help you uh, take care of yourself. So, the, the one thing that I think you should take away is that understand your benefits and become your own advocate. Got it. Thank you. Well, Anita, I know that you're really busy and I just wanted to spend some time with you on open enrollment today, but I want to do another episode with you to talk about Medicare because that is something that is a little bit more complex. And would you be open to coming back on the show to talk to us about Medicare, Part A, B, C, D, et cetera. Et cetera. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. It is so confusing. I, I, I will do that. I would love to do that. Remember, um, health healthcare is my life. And um, I am really partial to um, seniors and um, the baby boomers and people with disabilities. So I would love to do that, Gina. Thank you so much. Excellent. And in the meantime, if someone actually has a question, would you, um, how can they get a hold of Anita? Um, you can reach me at, send me an email at anita.lofton, that's L-O-F-T-O-N, at, it's a long email, the Lorniana, L-O-R-N-E-A-N-N-A group.com. That's the name of my company, the Lorniana Group. Excellent. Well, Anita, thank you so much. And I will definitely love to have you back on the show to brief us and educate us on Medicare. And until that time, um, I wish you the best of luck in the upcoming up open enrollment period and getting everyone knowledge to, on exactly what their coverage is. Thank you, Gina. And if any of your listeners have any additional questions, I gave my email. But if you have any questions too, you know, I'm always available for you. Excellent. And this will all be in the show notes. So those of you who are driving and listening to this episode, you could also read it in the show notes. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Anita. And we'll be talking soon. Thank you for watching the Gina Lofton show. If you would like to learn more about how to achieve financial freedom for yourself in the quickest amount of time possible using proven methods, go to www.ginaloftin.com. Now I'm bringing in profits. I knew what I needed, so I went out and got it. Started stacking up assets. Now I'm bringing in profits. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, leave a comment, or share this video. We would really appreciate it, and we thank you.